from in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's every kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. (laughs) Again, I'm always amazed at the things they spend money to study. Some of this stuff you don't need to study. You really don't. Some of the things they've spent millions of dollars to study, I've already told you on this program. And uh, then they go out and they spend the money to uh, find out what they could have saved a lot of time by just calling me. But, uh, okay, they wasted their time on this, and then once again it bears out what I've been telling you. Here it is. This is from the Associated Press. Divorce. And out-of-wedlock childbearing cost U.S. taxpayers more than $112 billion a year. According to a study commissioned by four groups advocating more government action to bolster marriages. Now, let me just say, uh, bolstering marriage is not my business. It's not my issue. It's not my problem. And it's not something I'm concerned about. And it's certainly nothing that I believe the government can do anything about. So I do not believe the government should be taking action to bolster marriages. I think what the government needs to do is what they won't have the guts to do. And that is to treat straight people equally with gays. You know, they talk about gay people wanting special rights. Well, they've got a special right. Gay people have got a special right that straight people don't have. You know what it is? The inability to get legally married. You know, while gays and lesbians are protesting for the right to get married, I think the protest should go in the other direction. I think straight people should be protesting to take away the right to get married. So nobody can put a gun to our head and try to force us to do it. Honey, I'd love to marry you, but remember last year they made it illegal. That's what we want. But the out of wedlock childbearing, that's the part of this that I'm interested in. By the way, why do they lump together divorce and out of wedlock childbearing in this study? Well, it's because of the agenda of the group. Because these are two separate issues. The out of wedlock childbearing, I'd like to know that number on its own. And I think the people who are Having out-of-wedlock children ought to be the ones fronting the cost, not the rest of us. You want to have children out of wedlock? Okay. You're going to pay for it. Let's see what would happen to out-of-wedlock childbearing if the people who have out-of-wedlock children had to pay the entire cost of it. Says here, sponsors say the study is the first of its kind and hope that it will prompt lawmakers to invest more money in programs aimed at strengthening marriages. By the way, how can the government do that? I mean, you've been to the DMV. They can't even get your driver's license without standing in line for three hours and giving you some attitude. How are they going to strengthen your marriage? They're going to attach electrodes to people. How are you going to do that? you going to cement them together? <laughs> we'll spend money uh, buying concrete so we could just, uh, you know, uh, link people up for life. Says here, two experts not connected to the study said such programs are of dubious merit, indeed, and suggested that other investments, notably job creation, would be more effective in aiding all types of needy families. 
There have been previous attempts to calculate the cost of divorce in America. And again, the cost of divorce in America. You're, you're, you're adding apples plus oranges here. The cost of divorce. There may be a cost of divorce. But why did you add it together with the cost of, of out-of-wedlock childbearing? I mean, let's take baseball statistics, for example. That would be like adding up the number of home runs and errors somebody had and, again, coming up with a total. Two unrelated statistics that should stand on their own. And they would if you didn't have this group that had its own agenda. And that's why the study was done. It says here the sponsors of the new study said theirs is the first to gauge the broader cost of, quote, family fragmentation, both divorce and unwed childbearing. The study was conducted by Georgia State University economist Ben Scafidi. His work was sponsored by four groups who consider themselves part of a nationwide marriage movement. Why do I smell conservative Republicans somewhere near this? The New York-based Institute for American Values... The Institute for Marriage and Public Policy, Families Northwest of Redmond, Washington, and the Georgia Family Council, an ally of, oh, what a surprise, the conservative ministry focus on the family. David Blankenhorn, president of the Institute for American Values, said the study documents for the first time that divorce and unwed childbearing, besides being bad for children, are costing taxpayers a ton of money. We could save taxpayers a lot of money by making divorce easier. No more judges, no more courts. You don't take judges who should be putting rapists in prison and have them spending their day deciding who gets the knives and who gets the forks. How about we just take divorce out of the court system altogether? You're going to save a goddamn fortune. Seriously. Blankenhorn said, we keep hearing this from state legislators. Explain to me why this is any of my business. Aren't these private matters? Take a look at these numbers and tell us if you still have any doubt. Well, again, the reason divorce costs taxpayers so much is because lawyers insist on turning every divorce into a protect a protracted fight that involves going to court, filing papers, blizzard, a blizzard of papers, all of your financial records, all of this stuff that is none of the public's business going into the public record. Hell, when I've gotten divorced, the, the efforts I have had to go to to keep stuff out of the public view. You know, how much money I make is none of your business, and it's none of anybody's business for that matter, and how much money you make is none of my business. And yet, uh, they, they want you to produce all this paperwork, and then they enshrine it in some file somewhere where people are paid salaries to uh, gather and maintain this material. Outrate, no wonder it costs so much. How about you just stop doing that? Really, how much money I make is between me and whatever person I was stupid enough to marry. It's nobody else's business. Says here, Scafidi's calculations were based on the assumption that households headed by a single female have relatively high poverty rates. Why is that? Women don't save, women don't invest, women spend money, don't know how to save money or make money. Are there exceptions? Sure. Why waste my time talking about the exceptions? Most women I know can't balance their checkbook. Most women I know go to the store and get go to a sale that says 20% off, and then they put all the stuff they buy in a credit card that charges 18% per year. But I save so much money. How much did you pay in interest? I don't know. No wonder women's, <laughs> seriously, no wonder women's standard of living is so low and they have relatively high poverty rates. Are you kidding me? Yes, and those high poverty rates, it says here, lead to higher spending on welfare, health care, criminal justice, and education for those raised in the disadvantaged homes. The $112 billion estimate includes the cost of federal, state, and local government programs and lost tax revenue at all levels of government. Reducing those costs, Scafidi said, quote, is a legitimate concern of government, policymakers, and legislators. Well, why would strengthening marriages, something the government is incapable of doing, trust me, look at the great job they're doing on, on drunk drivers, for example, 
Uh, how many of you have driven drunk in the past year and gotten away with it? Yes, I know. Yes, but we've had alcohol education. We've got laws. We've got prisons. Yeah, it's doing a great job, too. Unbelievable. So uh, why would we want the government uh, getting involved in strengthening marriages? Uh, what we ought to be doing is making marriage a private matter between the two people who get married. Just like two people forming a corporation, two people forming a business should be no business of the state. When a marriage breaks up, it should automatically go to arbitration with an impartial arbitrator that is picked before the marriage begins. Being that two out of three marriages here in Southern California end a divorce, one out of two nationally. Let's just prepare for the divorce in advance. You have women using terms like starter husbands now. Uh, they're planning divorce into the equation. I was 25, and I thought it would be a good idea to get the first one out of the way. I've heard women say that. you got to be kidding me. It says here, while the study doesn't offer formal recommendations, it does suggest that state and federal lawmakers consider investing more money in programs. See, we're already spending all this money, and now they want to spend more money on programs, it says here, intended to bolster marriages. Such a program has been in place in Oklahoma since 2001. Texas last year earmarked about $15 million in federal funds for marriage education. Hey, I'd give you some marriage education for free. Don't do it. The study says, because of the very large taxpayer costs associated with high rates of divorce and unwed childbearing, and the modest price tags associated with most marriage strengthening initiatives, programs with even very modest success rates will be cost effective. Sure. And they don't have uh, some kind of a of a vested interest in that, do they? You don't think Focus on the Family would like to be getting some federal funds to be giving these courses in marriage, do you? You don't think Dr. James Dobson would like everybody to uh, in his organization to be employed with federal funding, do you? You don't think he, w he would mind that, do you? Says here, Tim Speeding, an economics professor at the Maxwell School of Syracuse University, who was not involved in the study, said he's seen no convincing evidence that the marriage strengthening programs work. He said, I have nothing against marriage. Relationship building is great. But alone, it's not going to do the job. A full employment economy would probably be the best thing. Decent, stable jobs. He also noted the distinctive problems arising in black urban areas where the rate of single mother households is largest. A high number of African-American men have been in prison. That limits their future earning potential and makes them bad marriage partners, regardless of what kind of person they are. A marriage program doesn't address that problem at all. And it goes on and on like this. Look. The government should not be getting involved in the marriage business. In fact, they are too involved in it as it is. Should government be involved in the welfare of children? Absolutely. And if there are abusive parents out there, the government has to get involved to get those kids out of that environment and into a healthier environment. I, I agree with that. But uh, that's taxing the government's ability right there. Uh, to be having the government getting involved in, in making marriages stronger, what the hell could the government do about that? The real solution is, number one, ladies, stop having kids out of wedlock because if you would read any of the studies, girls, are you paying attention, girls? If you would read any of the studies, you would see that when you become a single mother, you are putting yourself into poverty, okay? You're not all Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera with the baby bumps and the nannies and stuff. You are just a bunch of barely high school graduates, if that, who don't have the money, who don't have the time to take care of children. You have children, and then you expect the rest of us to pay for it. How about y'all stop having those kids? How about we give people disincentives to be having children out of wedlock? I have always advocated a tax system that rather than being based on you having a certain number of exemptions for each child that you have, that we give you three exemptions for every uh, one of three children you don't have. So in other words, you start out when you have no children with three exemptions. Have one child, you get two exemptions. Two children, you get one exemption. If you have three children, you get no exemptions. More than three children, you pay extra. You pay part of the cost. 
you know, taxes are supposed to give people an incentive to do things they wouldn't otherwise do. When you give people, like, tax incentives, sweat equity, like to rebuild inner cities and what have you, the idea of that is to get people to do things they wouldn't otherwise do. Having children is something people are going to do no matter what the tax policy is. So how about we start charging people who have more kids? You want to have four kids, five kids? Guess what? Your taxes are going up. And see how many people go ahead and have five and six and seven kids then. You know, I mean, again, I, I have no, you, you have a right to have as many kids as you want, but you better be prepared to pay for all the services that's going to, to, to cost us. You want to send uh, 12 kids to school? Great. You pay for nine of them. Uh, the first three are on us. I think that's reasonable, don't you? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I just have a problem with you calling women dumb bitches. I don't see where you get off. Well, I only do it when they are dumb bitches. Yeah, but it's just such a derogatory term. You cannot find any other words in your vocabulary just to express how you feel. Oh, yeah. Dumb whores, uh, stupid broads. There's plenty of words in my vocabulary. You're not even uh, I'm a, Why are you on I'm, the radio? This is I'm over the hill ridiculous. sluts. I mean, I'm, I'm like a thesaurus. I got plenty of words. It's the Tom Likey Show. It's the job like a show. I want 800 5 800 top. Thank you for tuning in. Like being part of our program. We appreciate it. Okay. We're talking about a study involving two unrelated issues divorce and out of unlock parenting. And they talk about how this is costing American taxpayers more than $112 billion a year. Uh, the people who sponsor the study, of course, have a vested interest. They'd like to get federal fund. You know, they didn't say this, of course, but you know they'd like to get federal funding so they can then educate people. And, of course, many of them have a Christian conservative, you know, agenda. They'd like to be educating people on how to stay married. Ways to stay married probably would include things like, you know, abstain from sex, uh, abstain from uh, doing anything except the missionary position, um, you know, don't use any birth control. Just have as many babies as you can and then pray to God that everything will be okay uh, and other similar great advice. Uh, I say the solution is less people getting married, less people having children out of wedlock, economic disincentives to be having children out of wedlock. Start charging people for that. Make them pay the real cost of education. Make them pay the real cost of welfare. Make them pay what it costs. And we'll see how many people are going around with baby bumps then. And that includes teenagers. Make them pay, too. If not then, they're them, then their parents. Make them pay. If you can't keep your little sluts uh, from going out and spreading their legs late at night, maybe you ought to be paying the tax. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Lisa on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you today? I'm great. Wonderful. This is my first time calling. I absolutely love you, and I agree with you 100% on this topic. I'm, um, I've am i been married, divorced, no kids. I'm so sick and tired of paying for other people's kids. It's ridiculous. And as far as I'm concerned, I should be rewarded. I should get lots of money back on my taxes because I'm tired of paying for everybody else's kids. Yeah, I'm, I totally agree with you. Uh, um, you know, it's really unfair. Uh, if I uh, make X dollars... And have no children, as I do. And the guy next door to me makes the same amount. He makes X dollars also, but he has three children. I pay more in taxes than he does. So essentially, I'm being taxed to pay so he can have children. Absolutely. And you're paying for his children to be educated. And, and these welfare people, I, there were supposed to be term limits on that. And it's absolutely ridiculous. Well, I'm not even talking about the education. I am being taxed so he can get a tax benefit. Absolutely. I pay more. He pays less. So his kids not only get educated and get school lunches or school milk or vaccinations or whatever else kids get, uh, educational programs or teach them how to use a tampon or whatever, uh, he also gets a, a, a financial benefit. Mm -hmm. And, and I, paying. I'm paying for it. 
Absolutely. We're paying to raise their children. I didn't have these children. Why is it coming out of my tax? I'll solve you the problem right now. If the people having children had to pay the cost of having them, how many out of wedlock births do you think we'd have then? Oh, absolutely. The reason we have so many out of wedlock births is because we put no limits on how many kids you can have or how many tax exemptions you get. Yep. I agree. I, uh, my, my ex boyfriend had four kids with his ex wife and, and it's crazy the money he gets back. And every year I'm stuck paying and paying and paying. And it's, you know, because I don't have the little deductions running around the house. It's outrageous. So it's crazy. But I just want to call and, and tell you I agree with you 100%, Tom. You're on. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Lisa. Appreciate Alrighty. the call. Yep, 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. For some reason, that call won't hang up. Line six. Why don't we pop that down and figure out what's wrong with the phone? There we go. Something's wrong with the phone. Let's go to the other hybrid and say hello to uh, Maria on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. Hello. Hi, Tom. I love you. As well you should, darling. You're awesome. Thank you. Okay, so what are we talking about? I don't know. I'll tell you what. Buy a radio. Call me back. Let's say hello to Angelina on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing okay. I'm doing wonderful. Um, well, I'm an LCSW. You're, you're, what is that? I, I apologize. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, and so it's just a really fancy name for a therapist. Oh, okay. Got it. <laughs> I went to a really conservative private school, so I'm um, thinking that everything that they would give us would support all these marriage programs that are already going in Oklahoma and Texas. Yes. But actually, in all reality, there is no, zero clinical proof supporting them. Well, um, I agree with that. I don't understand it at all. I, <laughs> uh, of course, again, this whole study and the, the the numbers of billions it's costing, blah, blah, blah. When you see the names of the groups that, that sponsor the study, these are all the groups that would like to get, after we find out how much the government is already spending, they want the government to spend even more money. Uh-huh, and sure. and they want the money given to their groups. Uh-huh. And, if you re- and if you really look at it and break down the cost of Planned Parenthood versus marriage therapy, you could spend an easy 115 hour on marriage therapy. That's where you could go to Planned Parenthood and... $150 for a year, you get a year's worth of birth control for free. I tell you what, how about if your little 14-year-old slut had to pay taxes every time she had a baby bump? Uh, how likely do you think would be she'd learn how to use birth control? It's really not that hard. And how about if you couldn't <laughs> keep your little slut indoors at night, how about the parents pay? Yeah, most definitely. Well, I, I'm actually picking you, up the you, keys you for think, my you birth think You think they wouldn't put a collar and leash on that girl then? Yeah, I, actually, I'm picking up the keys for my first house today, and you should see how many taxes I just paid today as well. Oh, I just bought a house so myself. Single. I just bought a house myself, so I'm well aware of how much you pay. <laughs> so, yeah, for being single and having no kids and knowing how to use birth control, I sent off my taxes and almost cried. I completely understand. But uh, <laughs> are you excited about your big uh, stimulus payment? Uh-huh. <laughs> don't, don't spend it all in one place, dear. Oh, gee, why not? Actually, I'm one of the few women with no debt except for my mortgage. Really? Yes. I make too much money. I don't get a stimulus payment. <laughs> I have to stimulate myself. Um, there's always a right hand for that. It, that's my game plan tonight about 10. <laughs> All right. Have a good one. Thank you. I, I get a little stimulus for you. right? I, you want to see my stimulus package? I'm going to show it to you right now. <laughs> Here's a stimulus package for you right there. Who needs an $800 check? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Jesse on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great topic. Thank you. You know what? I think they should cut Section 8. I mean, the system has this this, uh, single mom feeding kids galore and making fun of the system. Um, Section 8 should invest more money in investigating where those kids come from instead of cutting up more money to them. You know, I, I hate to go to my uh, units and apartments and all these uh, girls are doing is just making fun now, of them. Nobody system. wants to solve this problem. I've got the solution to the problem, um, along with the one I just suggested, economic disincentives uh, to have uh, illegitimate children. How about we add in there mandatory DNA testing, like has been proposed in Tennessee and some other states now. So every time a woman tries to slide one by and say that it's one guy's kid when it's really another guy's kid, 
uh, these women are going to be exposed, and therefore they'll be less likely to play that game. You got it. I couldn't agree with you more. It is so horrible to see these people just spinning kids, and their, their, their husbands don't want to get better jobs because, you know what, when they go see the social worker, they're going to see that their husband is making ten grand or $20,000 a year, and they won't even qualify for food stamps. They're laughing their butts off driving better cars than you and I do, Tom. You should run for governor. I think you're absolutely right, Jesse. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. To all those guys out there that are that are knocking these broads up and, and telling them that they love them and, and all of that, you know, these girls don't love you. These girls love the wallet. These girls don't want to have your baby. These girls want to have job security. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Thank you for tuning in. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. We're here talking about a study that uh, talks about the cost of divorce. And out of wedlock childbearing, and I've given you my solution to these problems. You want to cut down on divorce? Stop getting married. You want to cut down on out of wedlock childbearing? Start making people pay the cost of out of wedlock childbearing rather than charging the people who don't have children to subsidize those who do. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Rick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I, man, listen to me. I, I totally agree with you. It's extremely frustrating that people are going out and having kids. They, they don't want to take the responsibility. They want to pay for them. But the problem is this, is when people who don't have kids start saying, I don't want my taxes to go for that. I don't want my taxes to pay for schools or access. No, wait a minute, but that's not what I said. Okay. No, no, what, let me let me make it clear what I'm okay. saying. Okay. okay, I know that that it is to my benefit to have an educated populace. Right. So generally speaking, I like the idea of educational taxes. One of the reasons I like that idea is because everybody pays them, and nobody gets a discount because they have kids. Everybody pays. You know, if the guy next door owns a house, the same house as mine. You know, income taxes, I subsidize his federal income taxes. I subsidize his California state income taxes. But property taxes, we pay the exact same amount. So as long as we're all paying equally, I'm fine with that. But when it comes to paying for children in general, like giving people exemptions for having kids on their taxes, not fair. Right. No, I, I agree with that in the abstract. The problem is if you look at the cost of living right now with gases, food prices going up, uh, hey, why should I subsidize you? Well, the, no, the reason why is because is if, if parents don't have enough money to give to their kids. Then they shouldn't be having so many kids. No. You know what? I, 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 let me give an example. I'm a rich guy, but no. I'm not as rich as other rich guys. And you know what? I would love to own a Maybach. God, I've ever been in a Maybach. It's got curtains in there, for God's sake. It's got reclining, vibrating seats. It's got a wine storage unit and a place to put my wine glass while my driver drives me around. It's fantastic. But you know what? It's $550,000. The reason I don't have a Maybach is because I can't afford one. I don't think we should take money out of your taxes to pay so I can have one. And the same thing is true for children. You know what? Children are an expense. In addition to being human beings, there's a cost involved. And people who can't afford to pay the cost of having children shouldn't be having them. And people who can't afford to have six kids maybe should have two kids. But right. the, but the, but the rest of us should not be subsidizing them. Well, the only difference is that your Eibach, if let's say you, you were to buy an Eibach. It's a Maybach like with an M. Maybach. The, the car, if my taxes, the difference between my taxes going to pay for your car and my taxes going to pay for someone's kid is after 18 years of not getting proper funding, your car isn't going to come out and be a convicted felon. It isn't going to try and break into my house. Again, we need to give people, resources. we need to make people pay the cost of having children so they'll have a disincentive to keep having them. I, I fully agree, but at the same time, is you can't then come in with an iron, you know, a draconian response that we're going to cut. It's not a draconian response. What we have now is, is lunacy. We give people a bonus for having more children. It's stupid. It's something they're going to do anyway. Right. Well, I think uh, the, the better plan, I think, is is to not cut the, not take away the taxes, but to focus on the ludicrousy of not being able to teach 
safe sex practices in high school. I mean, you have this religious right movement about, I don't want my kids learning about... And by the quality. way, they're the people who did this study. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's ironic, isn't it? I think it it's I, not I, ironic. It makes perfect sense. Right. I think a, a much more stricter version of separation of church and state, what's in the best interest of the public, irregardless of what your, your religious beliefs are. Focusing irregardless on of your grammatical that. ability? Hmm? <laughs> yeah, you got me there, Tom. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's just, that's just what I wanted to say is that, is that always remember that when you cut the funds, you're basically promoting the the advancement of the felon who's going to come and steal your car. I totally disagree. I think if you told the little sluts your taxes, you're, even if you're paying zero in taxes, you're now going to have to pay $1,500 each year for every child you have. Guess what? They're going to find a way to keep their legs shut or to find some birth control. Right. Well, the problem is that that's not necessarily always true. I mean, even if, let's say... Let's what do you mean it's not necessarily always true? We haven't tried it yet. Right, but what I'm saying is, let's say everyone... All we've done is rewarded people who breed. Right. What I'm saying is that, let's say 99.9% .9 of birth control is effective to use properly. Well, that 0.1% out of 250 million people... But we're not talking about whether birth control is working properly. We're talking about people who d intentionally don't use birth control because they see Brittany and Christina and, and all these people having babies, and so they want to go ahead and have them, too. What they don't understand is that the famous people you see in Us Weekly, they can afford nannies and drivers and maids and cooks and butlers, but you, but you can't afford to buy that copy of Us Weekly that you you're looking at. Uh, well, no, I, again, I fully agree about taking personal responsibility and and, and making voting. them pay. Right, and making them pay, but at the same time, not cutting cutting the the taxes and things like that. I think is is essentially. I don't think idea. people. I think people who don't have children should be rewarded. People who have less children should be rewarded. People who have more children should pay a penalty. People who have children out of wedlock should pay a tax. Right. <laughs> I mean, that, that makes sense in the abstract. The problem is that put into put into practice, I think you would see more... Why would there be a problem putting it into practice? There would be a problem putting it into practice? I'm asking you, why would there be a problem putting that into practice? Oh, the, well, the reason why putting it into practice would be a problem is because once it's implemented, then the, the consequences of this would be kids getting less funds for education, for clothes, for proper nutrition. Their parents made a mistake. They're, quite frankly, they probably should not. They'd make less the mistakes day. if they knew that rather than getting a bonus for having a child, they were going to get a bill. Right. Well, the thing is, you can make the same argument then that on a pack of every cigarette that says if you smoke this, you're going to get cancer, but people still smoke it anyways. That's so right. That and they deserve to get cancer. Right, but to say that everyone's a rational agent and they're going to stop having kids because they're going to have to pay for well, it. Well, at the very least, the cost of having the children would be paid for. True, but the problem is, is that the cost of having to us having to have higher crime rates and, hi and higher problems. Why are you assuming there'd be a higher crime rate if the, if the person who had the kid had to pay the cost of having the kid? Because they would. Have that's to a long stretch. Do you have any empirical evidence to prove that you don't? Oh no, no, actually, that's not true. There's been several significant studies that have there are studies that say if we put a tax exemption in the reverse, that if we uh, charge people uh, a fifteen hundred or whatever dollar uh, uh, tax uh, 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 surcharge for every illegitimate child they have, there is research. I want to know what study that was that you read. Okay, well, think of it logically. What's the demographic of people who continually have children out of out of wedlock? Uneducated, lower class individuals. So if you take away their tax incentives uh, for our to tax assistance for having kids, then now you're going to be tacking on even more bill or, or less funds for people who already have no funds. So where are these people going to get the funds to? Well, paper they're going to have to think. Payment? They're going to have to think twice. Uh, that, and you know what? I think that's the only language people like that understand. Uh, you know, if you have a child, you're going to pay another $1,500 a year for every illegitimate child you have. Uh, that's the only thing poor people understand. And trust me, because I grew up in the poorest neighborhood in America. Trust me when I tell you. That's what they get. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, a Daisy on the Tom Likas show. Hi. Hi, Tom. Hi. I just want to say that um, I don't understand why do you call f uh, girls fat when you're fat yourself. Not only are you fat, but you're ugly and you're... That's a very good argument. So I see you have absolutely no ammunition, do you? No, 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 no. All you have is name calling. You have no facts. Let me ask you, how old is your illegitimate child? I don't have any. Really? I go to school. 
I see. When are you planning on having bastard children? Are you planning on doing that? Um, yeah, when I get married. Oh, when you well, you can't have bastard children when you're married, unless you're having them with uh, some other guy other than your husband. No, I'm not planning on having any kids out of wedlock. I see. Well, why is this topic uh, such uh, such a, a, a sensitive one for you? Okay, okay, I'm going to tell you why. Because, because your mother was a single mother and uh, was banging out kids. She was a breeder. She's been married for uh, 30 years. She's not. She was never. Okay, so then why would you care so much about this topic? Because I'm a wo- I'm a girl myself. Oh, because you were a girl yourself. I'm a girl, and how dare you? You have. You're like how old are you? Sixty. Wait, 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 wait. So you're. You so no you're. So let me understand. You're, you're, one those, you're one of those. You're one of those two hundred pounders. So you're one of those two hundred pounders coming in here, dear. No, I'm five five. I weigh one thirty. I'm not fat at all. I'm a all very right. attractive girl. Sure you are. I work. Are you on the telephone? Everybody's attractive, dear. We've heard this before. Well, and well, then when they send the photos in, we see the truth. Oh, absolutely. That's what I was about to do. Just Good. You send that photo in, and we'll put it up on our MySpace page, and then we'll let people decide if they think you're attractive or not. <laughs> the last woman, by the way, promised to send the photos. Never did. We know what she looked like. Tell you what. 1-800-5800-TOM. Scott on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. How you doing? Like you care. I do care. I do care. I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. I disagree with you. Well, I'm you don't even know how I'm doing. doing. Well, how you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay. Thanks. It's good to hear that. Only thing I disagree with, Tom, I agree with 98% of everything you say. Uh, I've got five kids of my own. I pay my taxes. I pay my bills. I raise those kids. I love raising those kids. I stimulate the economy. I have two, two of the kids. In you think I don't stimulate the economy? Two, no, I know you do. I know you stimulate a lot. A well, lot I just bought my $3 million home uh, in Santa Barbara County. And then had to hire a groundskeeper, painters, a guy to install my satellite dish. Uh, The guy had to come over and install a telephone. You think I'm not stimulating the economy? My hands off to you. And there was there was not one little crumb cruncher around. So so stop with this stereotype that people like you are stimulating the economy and people like me are just selfish. Because I, you know what, I could I probably pay enough out to other people to employ you ten times over in a given year. All right, let's think about this for a minute. I appreciate the fact that you pay so many people. On the other hand, I'm raising five kids. So what? That are, that are going to be taxpayers in the future. Well, fine. And uh, by the way, they're, they're, by the way, because, they should be taxpayers in the future because they're going to drive on interstate highways in the future, and they're going to have kids to go to Absolutely. school in the future, and they are going to be doing other things that involve federal funding in the future. No. Yeah, yes, no, 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 they no. are. They yes, they are. When you are pay- no, they will not be. Pay- they will be paying for what they use in the future. No, they will. They will have kids. They will be contributing, and so on. And no, no. Having more children does not contribute to the economy. It costs the economy. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Really? Why absolutely does Sweden, not. which has a lower birth rate than we do, have a better economy than we do? Oh, Tom. I'll wait for your answer. You can send that in if you like. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Lori on the Tom like it. Oh, Daisy backed out. Doesn't want to send the photo of her 180-pound body in here so we can all decide what she really looks like. I knew that Daisy was a big whale. That's why she was all upset. Lori, yes. Hey, Tom, how are you today? Do you, I do care. I'm doing great. Great. I could not have put it better than what you said. And, I mean, you really hit home with me. I do have one child. Um, and, yeah, that's my quota. Um, and I need to tell you that I really think that this has a lot to do with um, the fact that the demographic that are having the children, of course, as everyone always points out, are the, are the either middle or lower income people, maybe uneducated. And I think for the most part, maybe living off of the assisted programs that our country provides, um, not to mention the fact that they're getting the tax breaks. But I would like to see my taxes be less because I don't appreciate supporting other people either. And I think that um, just kind of tying it into that, I, I kind of laugh because this kind of goes back to something I've been thinking all my life is, well, why don't we do something about it? Uh, if people are going to take a, a advantage of assisted programs, why don't we do something like mandatory nor plans for, for young girls so that they're not going to get pregnant? Or you There know, you go when you sign up for high school. When you sign up for elementary school in L.A., <laughs> you'll give them nor plan right off the bat. The Tom Likas Show.